When I think about it from a business perspective, there are probably three big agendas we want to try and focus on. The first is we ought to be the generator of products and solutions and technologies which ultimately can help the situation. So we need to be focused on how that happens. We need to make sure that we allocate resources and capital inside the organizations to actually make those technologies become a reality. They don't just happen by accident. So if we simply develop products for the West, the chances of something materially good happening which could transform things in the developing world in an area like maternal health is much less likely than if we focus on the problem properly. It's important we do that. I know it sounds completely obvious, but it's not obvious. You have to make a distinct decision to go and invest to create technologies to address the needs of the populations you're trying to serve. The second major platform we have to think about it's all very well to invent products and technologies and have an offering for people with need. But then are we smart enough to figure out how to ensure they have access to those technologies? So are we really going to invest the energy to think through the whole system challenge that exists? Because as we all know, it's not simply about having a technology intervention or a drug or a vaccine intervention. It's how do you make that intervention happen at the right moment in the system so it actually has a benefit and isn't just a gesture which has no consequence? How do we make sure we understand that system and how do we work with the system? How do we make sure the human resource base is in place? How do we make sure the distribution capacities are in, base, in place? It's really no excuse to say that we invented a product and it's somebody else's fault that no patients actually saw that product. That's an inexcusable reason for failure. And it's something that we have to really focus on in a business. You have to take a share of the accountability to understand how the system needs to evolve to deliver the technology or the intervention which has value for the people involved. And then the third area is really one of will of political will, of, of the philosophy of what's trying to be achieved. And that's where I think businesses also play a potentially very important role. I'm sure many of you would look at companies like the ones I, I represent or maybe some of the other companies on this board and in general you would say big business is pretty good at lobbying in its own interest. So those of you who are in America will have heard repeatedly comments about the lobby in Washington. And wherever you go in the world, you'll hear people talk about big business influence. Now, today is not the day to, to justify or not that case. The point is, we are good at lobbying. So what we need to focus on just like we're good at developing products for the West, can we focus on developing products for people who need it in the developing world? We ought to be helping to deploy our skills in lobbying for the agenda of the developing world. One of the contributions big business can make, in addition to products, in addition to access ideas, is to help stimulate governments and other bodies to really think through or to help contribute to overarching frameworks of policy, to help governments ensure that they don't cut development aid programs when everything else is in question, just as we're seeing play out right now in countries like the UK and elsewhere. Helping make sure that we can do our bit to work with organizations like Gavi, for example, to create the AMC programs which facilitate the massive implementation of vaccination programs for newborns around the world. Those are good examples of where business can play a very constructive role in using the skill set it depends on for its core businesses, but apply it to this area. Let's think broadly today. In innovations are about products, they're about services, they're about new ways of doing things, they're about new ways of educating, they're about new, low-cost, affordable innovations that will save mothers and children. That's what we need to be thinking about. 
Certainly number two, the access issue. Thinking today, I want all of us to be thinking about the system. It's not good enough to fix one piece, and we can't, no, the businesses can't do it alone. This is done in partnership, but we must think about the entire system and not just one aspect, and that's where that access comes in. Those of us in the NGO community, those of us in the, in the academic world, all of the communities and the countries and the, the experts in the countries in which we work, we all need to know how to advocate for women and, and children to survive. One thing that is important in this space is to recognize that one size doesn't fit all and we need to be open to innovative solutions, to new ideas and to um, the needs of communities around the world. Um, I would also add that uh, it's important to recognize and leverage core capabilities. And when we think about core capabilities within a company like Coca-Cola or within your own organization, anything we can do to leverage those strengths together, to play into those capabilities together, will enhance the ability for accelerated advancement of ideas and bringing those ideas to life. So I think as you know, NGOs, as governments look for sources of um, support, uh, spotting what's important to the company. And we're pretty open about that. I mean, most companies, we've got our websites, we're always talking about what we're doing and why we're trying to do it. It's reasonably easy to find where the, the company's um, uh, motivation is, what their agenda is, and linking those up and joining the dots is the opportunity. It's a much more productive and sustainable approach than asking for donations and support. How do they build the compelling case to you as a business leader for you to say, you know what, let's work together, let's figure out how to build this model that is not a CSR model, is a model that is part of our business and can move forward? This is what I'll tell them. I'll tell them to stop looking at people in the developing world as mere recipients of other human beings' goodwill and forever so and instead start looking at them as participants in the marketplace, in the global health care value chain. This is possible if we could just change our mindset a bit uh, from you know, being overwhelmed by the magnitude of the problem. We talked about the statistics that are so scary and uh, the figures today that are just unfathomable and impossible to get at and People continue to die, mother and children will continue to suffer. But 10 years ago, 10 years ago, uh, and I'm involved in this industry, the global telecom industry didn't believe that you can do business in poor economies. Mm -hmm. So they never looked at people in the developing world as market participants. Uh, the phone was just a rich man's tool, government offices had some. And today, 10 years later, thanks to innovation, thanks to a very radical change of mindset, the telephone is every human being's survival tool. Rich, poor, young, old. And I'm not going to talk about how much the telephone, just having the telephone, has reduced uh, deaths, unnecessary deaths, whether of mother and children or just any other person. And how has this happened? Um, is by people realizing that to make products, sophisticated products, and expensive products available to poor people, you don't necessarily have to reduce the price and therefore reduce the incentive for you to be in that business. You can break down that product into very tiny pieces that poor people can afford. But then, it's not just the consumers, but also in between, the business people get to become part of that value chain.